The leaders of the world's 20 biggest economies are gathering in Rome today for a G20 summit before heading to Glasgow, Scotland for the UN Climate Conference. That's lots of jet setting in one week for an international elite which wants you to cut back on your flying. COVID-19, the economic recovery and climate change are the main issues being discussed in Rome. However, representatives from the Interparliamentary Alliance on China, a body of some 200 global parliamentarians, are also gathering in Rome. They are there to stage a counter-meeting ahead of the G20 Leaders' Summit to demand a tougher stance towards China. And joining me now from Rome is Ian Duncan-Smith, former leader of the Conservative Party. Uh, Ian, you're very welcome uh, to the show. And uh, perhaps Hello, explain, explain to our viewers what you're doing in Rome today. Well, uh, we formed the Interparliamentary Alliance on China, IPAC, uh, a year ago. And the purpose of IPAC was to bring together as many nations as possible and politicians on the left and on the right together, so non-partisan, to draw attention uh, to all those countries that are believers in democracy, freedom, human rights, to say to them there is a real problem, a real threat, a growing menace from China who is disregarding all the normal rules that we all govern ourselves by, trade rules, financial rules. And then on top of that, you know, there's the Uyghur genocide, Tibetans, persecution of the Christians and the Falun Gong, the trashing of the Hong Kong Treaty with the UK and the arrest of uh, peaceful protesters, the occupation of the South China Seas, the death of those Indian soldiers. And finally, of course, the major threats now to Taiwan, where they've said that they will, uh, as necessary, invade Taiwan. So all of this is destabilizing. And I, as your interview, you heard you mentioned that, you know, 20 of the largest nations, well, they're not here. The, the Chinese president will not be coming to this. And the reality about the Chinese president is that he's also not going uh, to COP26. So any great hope where they said, oh, let's be quiet, let's be nice to the Chinese government, the CCP, because, you know, they'll, they'll cooperate. They're not cooperating even on climate change. And so we need to think about, you know, how we readjust our finance, our investments, how we look elsewhere, and we make sure that China is unable to threaten other nations. And so that's what IPAC is about, as I say. Uh, well over 200 members now from all over the world, and India uh, has joined today as well. So that's really important. I think that's quite significant, the fact that India has joined uh, with you, Ian, as well. And you mentioned the whole range of issues there. I mean, are you concerned about the fact that um, China does seem to be on a more isolationist approach uh, to its engagement with the rest of the world? Well, actually, yes, but also on the same point that Many in the rest of the world have followed what I consider to be a kind of project kowtow, which is that you sort of bend and prostrate yourself in front of China in the hope that China will change their ways. And IPAC has been making this point for some time, that in actual fact, you know, you, you can't carry on like that because they just take that and carry on and do what they want to do. We've also been having a photo shoot here because many of us, myself included, are now sanctioned by the Chinese government. So, you know, there are really countries that will if necessary, arrest us uh, and send us, arrange uh, us to be sent to China. Uh, and uh, so we have been making it very clear that we should, people should resist that and government should not cooperate with the Chinese government. And many of them are, are doing so. So there are lots of issues. But the key thing is we have to recognize, as we've learned in the 1930s, and we've learned again during the Cold War, you have to, in a way, confront uh, dictators like this, intolerant regimes, with their behavior and not keep giving them more and more that they ask for or demand in the hope that they'll change their ways. China is clearly not going to do that. Uh, and therefore, we need to be able to say, well, if you're not going to do that, then we need to rethink the nature of our investments and our involvement with China. And this idea of just hoping that for the best when recognizing there are serious problems in their behavior is complete nonsense. And far too many governments in the free world have followed that policy and it's clearly failing.